I like to kit batch models based on art designs or just anything I particularly like and that I can also find a way to work into my Warhammer armies. It allows me to take a close look at those designs in detail, break it down into its most important pieces, find ways to recreate them and end up with a version of it myself. This was definitely the case for Emerson Tang's Tankhead. I've been a fan of his work for a while and even made models inspired by his stuff before. So when I saw the trailer for the Tankhead narrative art book, full of amazing designs and about a never-ending war in a diesel punk setting full of machines, I knew I had to make a proper 40k Tankhead myself. In this video I'm going to show you how I did it, and in the process also cover how I paint and build in general. Tankhead covers a lot of stuff, so I had to narrow it down to something more specific to base my build on. I knew I wanted it to be a more typical tank-based humanoid, so I started looking through those designs. While doing so, I noticed a familiar shape in the M3 Grant, with its sloped front and offset weapon. It reminded me of the design of the Owner Jadoon Crawler, which seemed like a perfect starting point given my Admech familiarity. But I also kept in mind a similarly built tankhead, the M4, and another smaller scale tankhead of the Spaho. So in case recreating one part of the design isn't feasible, I had other references to look to. From there, I sized up what other kits I could use for the types of parts I needed by checking measurements online, asking around in local hobby stores, and digging through my own collection of bits for reference. Imperial Knights are an obvious go-to for humanoid mech parts, and I'm looking on the smaller end, which gets me the armager. And for a small turret for the head, I look to Imperial Guard tanks, checked out some options for secondhand spare parts, and was able to pick up most of a Baneblade Sponson turret. Now I had the largest and most important component of the model I needed, I loosely and temporarily assembled them, mainly using blue tack to check they roughly match size and to take note of any changes I need to make later. From this, I could tell the pieces fit well enough together and I could start the building with them. Also, just a side note with the building from here, I often adjust parts a lot to get exactly what I'm looking for, with cutting and trimming and sanding and separating, it's generally too much to mention every instance of, but I will mention the parts I'm using, the kits they're from, and show pictures of how I use them where I've remembered to take photos. Once I have the main parts I need, I try to assemble the minimum version of the build, just have a solid structure to build on, still with some detail if possible. In this case, it would be making a frame or skeleton, connected and assembled with plastic glue or super glue. Sometimes I also pin it, so it's a sturdy enough connection, but I can adjust or detach pieces later for sub-assemblies, so parts don't get in the way of one another during building and painting. Working from the bottom up, I began with the feet. The armage's default feet work, but don't match the tankhead ones enough for my liking. So to make a more human-like foot, I removed two of the armager's toes, had the remaining one become the back of the foot, and made a new front to it using the foot pad and supports from the Onager kit. The armager's legs work fine for the frame. I left them mostly as is, and then moved to the waist. I needed to connect the armager hips and the Onager chest, but leave space for its abdomen, and just for the bare minimum, I used some plastic rod, measured so that the other parts would be spaced properly. To glue it securely, I cut into the armager's hip so the rod could be glued all the way into place, and then I pinned the upper part of the connection. Which brings me to the chest. The onager mostly works, but the sides stick out unevenly. I'd need to change that so they're more symmetrical, and also have a flat surface to attach the armager's shoulders to. This was done by cutting off the middle part of the sides to replace them with plastic card but making sure to recess them slightly to leave room for the mechanical details I plan to add later, as the partially exposed shoulder mechanisms of the original art is something I definitely want to replicate. After my change to the sides, I also needed to adjust the roof. Similarly, I removed the midsection and replaced it with plastic card. Then I made use of the hatch from the part of the roof I removed, as it made a fitting circular piece to mount the turret on. Then I moved to the arms. Initially, I planned to use the same method for making them as I did for my Titanfall armager, using an armager shoulder, upper arm and elbow, then making a forearm from a Cataphron weapon barrel, and using a hand from a Castellan robot. However, checking my test fit and comparing it to the arm, I'd need to make the arms longer, and also change it around so the elbow covering part comes from the forearms. I stuck with the idea of using Cataphron weapon parts as they provide a good cylindrical shape, but this time around I used two one to extend the upper arm, and one to add to the now turned around elbow joint to make the forearm. Finally, I could move on to the head. I had most of a Baneblade sponsor turret, but it was missing a few parts, the roof and the gun. 
I made a new roof using plastcard, cut to match the shape and covered with the hatch from the Onager while I was at it. Then, from the turret's weapon, I wanted something on the smaller side so the chest weapon wouldn't be overshadowed. For that, I used one of the auto cannon barrels from one of the Onager's weapon options. And with that, I had a frame and I could begin armouring and detailing it, adding parts to better match the tank head art. The next biggest part was the armour, or the rest of it at least, as the chest and head parts I used were already armoured, but I needed to add some to the arms and legs. While I mostly took inspiration from the M3 tank head for the chest and armaments, its armour is too curved and specific to be easily replicated, which is why I also kept in mind the spatter. With its blockier armour, it made it a good point of reference to make plastic armour based on. I have another video of me demonstrating how to make armour with plastic card, taken from one of my building streams, but in brief I cut shapes from flat sheets of plastic to make panels. Measuring the air of the model to know how large piece of plastic I need to cut, and looking at the art to know what shape, sometimes using a grid drawn on the plastic card to help. Some of the armour requires gluing multiple plastic card pieces together to make more complex parts that fit around the frame. I used that basic method for the thigh, shin and hip armour, detailing the last with Onager headlight and footpad support parts. Then I also made the forearm and shoulder armour. Most of the armour I pinned to keep it detachable to paint separately, but the forearms were a bit more complicated. Needing to be armoured on most sides, I decided to glue the armour onto the frame to make it easier to build the connected shape around. Then I moved on to detailing with bits. That is, parts taken from other kits, mostly just leftover optional parts that weren't used. When detailing, sometimes I have a specific part in mind, and other times I just look for a part that generally has the right kind of shape. Now this is where having a good amount of leftover parts from other kits is a great help, even more so if you've gone through them and you're familiar with them. I've been building and converting for a while, so I've built up a fair amount, but I also keep an eye out on eBay for people selling bundles of their leftovers, because generally the more bits you have, the better it is for converting. Some models I frequently come back to for bits are the Catafrons and the Onager. They have a fair amount of optional parts, which means a lot of leftovers, but they also have a good variety so they can fit a range of uses when detailing. There are two areas in particular which I needed to detail with a lot of bits. The waist and the shoulders. I mentioned before about them being a feature of the art I quite like, not covered with armour, showing off the detailed inner mechanisms. Using Warhammer bits, which already have a lot of detail, helps replicate that aspect of the art and give the impression we're getting a look at the inner workings of a complicated machine. Starting with the waist, the inspiration art has kinds of pistons and brackets at a diagonal angle. So I got some bits that included circular elements, a pair of catafon weapons attached slanted at the sides of the plastic card rod, adjusted to fit with the Onager underside and joined at the front by a part cut from an Onager weapon. From there I added more parts on top to fill it out including a Catafron armour panel and Doomcrawler foot supports, with more of those types of parts to fill out the back as well. I used even more parts from those same kits to fill the shoulder area I left recessed from before. Starting with the largest parts I like the look of and that could fit, adding progressively smaller bits around until the plastic card is mostly covered. I also used some tread armour from the Catafron kit to add some detail to the flat plastic card areas on the sides of the forearm and around the neck. Next, I started looking at the turret head. I made some adjustments and shortened the weapon barrel, and mounted that on the armour panel normally used for the front of the bane blade turrets. I also replicated a few details from the art. A headlight, which I got from a Sidonian Dragoon, and a vehicle smoke grenade launcher from a Space Marine Rhino. At this point, I also finalised the chest mounted weapon. Trying to match the shorter and wider type of cannon on the M3, I used a Belarus energy cannon from a Scorpius disintegrator, which I glued onto a spare Onager weapon mount to make sure it connected properly to the chest. Plasticard is handy for making armour panels, but it's plain and looks lacking and featureless when compared with quite heavily detailed Warhammer bits. One way I tried to address this is riveting, replicating real life rivets used to connect armour panels. Particularly appropriate for this, given you often see rivets on tanks, and the Onager chest and Bane Blade turret already have rivets. There are a few different ways to do this on models, but the method I used for this build was to use 1mm ball bearings, which are glued into similarly sized holes I drilled into the armour, normally around the edges of the panels. 
Then, another way of detailing that is particularly useful and Admech appropriate is adding wires. I normally use wires made from green stuff, since it's flexible, easy to make to the exact dimensions I need, and can even have a few different patterns imprinted onto them using Green Stuff World's roll makers. And there's a few ways I add the wires. First, to cover areas that I feel need some more detailing, like making sure all the plasticard around the shoulders are fully covered. Another way is connecting bits I added with wires to make them more believably attached, like with the turret headlight. And since this is a humanoid, I also took a little biomechanical inspiration and replicated where some veins or nerves would be, like in the unarmoured sections of the forearm and the back of the spine. Just a note when doing this, try to make sure both ends of the wire are connected to something, or look like they lead somewhere, like they start or end at joints or at the edges of armour panels. And one last small type of detail, after looking at the inspiration art again, I made some handles by bending the paper clips I normally use for pinning, which I added to a few parts of the armour which should leave it all sufficiently detailed. And then the last thing to build, that I often forget about and leave too late to do anything that meaningful with, the base. This model will be joining my Admec forces, so I'll be basing it to match, which is a kind of industrial ruins. This is based on the loose ideas I have for the backstory, which is their partially destroyed forge world they're still fighting to fully recover. I do a few different things for this style, but it generally includes patterned plasticard, gravel or debris, leftover spare parts, and loose wires. To try and make it relate to the tank head, I looked up some tank garage and ship dry dock kind of terrain, and found some Titanfall 2 concept art that I'm always happy to use as inspiration. The majority of the base would be made up with plasticard panels to imitate concrete slabs, incorporating wire mesh for a drain grate, with some leftover green stuff wire from the detailing earlier, and leaving a section to add some texture paint to become the gravel. With the base together, that's the building part completed, and I moved on to the final step, which is painting it. I consider myself more of a builder than a painter, so I don't do anything particularly fancy or skilled painting-wise. It's mostly basic stuff with a few time-saving techniques that gets my conversions painted without spending a lot of time on them. As this is joining my Admech, I painted it in the same scheme, which is mostly grey armour with some orange details, and dark silver for the mechanical parts with some copper details. I started the same way I do pretty much all of my painting, priming it black and heavily dry brushing on the main colours, plus a simple highlight or two lightly dry brushed on top of that. This method gets most of the model painted pretty quickly. The dry brushing covers most of the surface, hitting the raised areas more, but leaving some of the recesses black from the priming, acting as a kind of shading. Doing some highlighting immediately after allows the paint to mix a little on the palette and the brush, ensuring you get a smooth transition to the bright parts on the raised areas, on top of the way dry brushing does that naturally. I mostly use Citadel paints, but I have been trying to branch out and get some paints from other ranges. I use Mechanica Standard Grey for the armour, sometimes two coats if necessary, and that's highlighted with Dawnstone and Administratum Grey for the very top edges. And since the metal will mostly be the frame underneath, I use the Dark Silver Paint Iron Warriors with Iron Hand Steel as a highlight. I also dry brush the base with some of the same greys and metals, but be careful not to go too bright with it since I don't want it to stand out more than the model itself. I stipple on some of the brighter greys before brushing them in to get a kind of different texture to the paint, and afterwards I also go over the area I left the base with the texture paint Astro Granite Debris for the gravel. For some orange markings on the unit and some yellow markings on the base, I use masking tape to ensure I get straight lines, then stipple on a few coats of the paints with a dry brush, since normal painting risks getting the paint under the edges of the tape. With the dry brushing having painted the main colours, the rest is just picking out details with a regular painting brush. I paint some wires with Ratskin Flesh Orange, Corn Red and Cavalite Green, and I use Balthazar Gold to pick out copper details on top of the metal parts. Then I also paint any parts that will be lights, screens or cameras in bright colours, either Celestra Grey or Pro Acryl's Bold Titanium White if I need it to be bright. This prepares it for the next step, which is getting some effects pretty easily using contrast paints. Any of the optics or lights or plasma effects that I want to be a bright blue, 
I go over with the athematic blue paint. And some other contrasts I use for similar effects but for different colours are Blood Angels Red, Magma Droth Flame Orange, and Karendras Green. And that green one in particular I always use for screens as well. I also use the contrast paint Black Templar to darken any of the metal parts I want to add more depth to. And I also find it works particularly well with the corrugated type of wire because of its texture. Then I add some decals. I try to find ones on the Admech transfer sheet that match the same type of markings on the art. Faction symbols, unit numbers, maker marks, or anything else that looks close. Those are applied and then gone over with a coat of decal softener to blend in the edges so they don't stand out. And it's at this point I go back to just check all over the model and clean up any mistakes or paint overspill I noticed. Then everything can be gone over with a coat of washes. I use Army Painter's Dark Tone to shade most of it with a black, and then I use their Strong Tone to wash the copper, reds and oranges with brown. I do a coat of both over the base just to get it worn and dirty looking. Then once that's dried, I glue together any parts or sub-assemblies, as it helps figuring out the most appropriate areas to be highlighted next. I don't do a lot of highlighting. After what I did at the start with the dry brush highlighting, most of it is already done. But for any particularly important parts, I do some edge highlighting just with the paints I used earlier. And for any of the other parts, I just go over some of the raised or upward facing areas with their original paints. Since they work as a slight highlight after the stuff that was applied earlier has been toned down with the washes. Sometimes I do take it further, getting some brighter shades of the colours for extra layers, but it already has a good level of highlights at this point, and I'm very happy to call this model finished. Which leaves me with this, my own Ninja tank head, inspired by some amazing designs, kitbashed out of 40k parts, and worked into my Adeptus Mechanicus forces. I strongly recommend you check out the tank head artwork and narrative artbook trailer that inspired this in the first place, and also consider subscribing, because I might do similar videos of other projects of mine going forward. And let me know if there's any conversions you want to see or building techniques I use that'd be worth making a more detailed video tutorial on.